Welcome to my fourth video where I discuss Crossfire, the World War II company level rules for tabletop wargaming. In this video I'm going to uh, cover indirect fire and armour. Indirect fire is fire from artillery and mortars. Uh, usually um, all this will be off table and you won't see it. Um, as I explained in the first video in this series, I like mortars, so I tend to paint the mortars for my companies. Indirect fire can be called in uh, either by the forward observer for the weapon or by your company commander. For the fire mission to arrive, um, you have to roll a six-sided dice, and uh, if you score high enough, then it, it arrives, um, and if you don't, nothing happens, um, which is a bit of a poor show for your side but at least failing uh, failing to call in an artillery strike or a mortar strike doesn't lose you the initiative. Barrage fire like this is directed at an enemy squad and if it's say an artillery strike or a mortar strike you'll roll some dice um, quite a lot in the case of artillery and um, results are applied as if you were you know shooting so one hit is a pin two hits would be a suppression, three or more would kill the unit. Heavier artillery has the ability to uh, suppress other units nearby. If it kills the unit it was, it was aimed at, then uh, a certain number of adjacent units will also be automatically suppressed. So um, an artillery barrage is, is quite a fearsome thing. Most of the time though, you'll just have your company mortar um, to offer support in this manner. Um, and the company mortar can kill things just like any other indirect fire, but its main role in crossfire really is to lay down smoke for you. Each scenario will give you a certain number of fire missions and a certain number of smoke missions. Smoke is placed on the table in a line and uh, for most of the company mortars you you get a line that's three infantry bases long so uh, in the case of my miniatures it would be 150 millimeters which is the width of one of these buildings i've got you can stick cotton wool on a base if you want i don't like cotton wool so um, i use uh, some acrylic tokens made by gale force 9. here we are um, as you can see, it's almost 150 millimetres wide. The base of that building behind it is the correct distance. Um, but since everybody's using these, then um, everyone's uh, equal and it's all fair. And these are very simple, just plonk down and um, put where you want them. If you called in smoke from a larger battery, then you'd get two of these um, and they'd form a, a continuous line. As you'd expect, smoke blocks line of sight, so it stops people shooting at you. It lasts until your next uh, initiative. So um, you call it down when you're the active player, put it on the table, um, your turn continues, the initiative will swap at some point. It'll stay there for your opponent's entire initiative turn as their active player, and then at the beginning of your turn, next turn, it will be taken off. That's about it for indirect fire. Um, so now I'm going to move on to tanks. And here we get to another part of the crossfire rules where I uh, diverge from the rules as written. So let me just go through um, what the actual rules say about tanks and then I'll tell you how I deal with tanks in my games. The crossfire rulebook is at pains to point out that crossfire is an infantry um, based game, which it is, and that tanks are not its main focus, which is fine, um, and then goes on to devote quite a lot of pages to tanks because it deals with them in, in um, quite an odd way. So tanks don't dominate the game, they are restricted to one action every time you have the initiative. So when you're the active player, each tank can move once or shoot once. If the tank's got a machine gun it can carry out reactive fire um, like a rifle squad but it can't do reactive fire with its main gun so actually they're pretty rubbish. 
A tank shoots like every other unit. It rolls its shooting dice and every five or six is a hit and one hit pins, two hits suppresses and three hits uh, kills um, its target if its target is, is an infantry squad. Um, it's different when it shoots against a tank. Get to that in a minute. Um, some big tanks ha like the artillery barrage can suppress adjacent units if it if they kill the one they were aiming at. When infantry shoot at tanks, they don't do anything. Tanks are immune to small arms fire. You need um, anti-tank weapons to damage them. The rules allow you to distribute anti-tank weapons uh, across the squads in your platoons for an extra point cost. I don't like this because it's um, another form of bookkeeping you need to remember which squads have got anti-tank weapons. Um, you can't see easily, uh, it slows the game down. So I have dedicated um, anti-tank squads, uh, which you can see here. Um, these double as my combat engineers, which is another type of infantry squad. So um, everyone can see where the anti-tank weapons are um, and who's got them. Infantry can assault a tank in close combat, and this is often um, the best and surest way of getting rid of it. With the rules as written, and the tank only moving once, and infantry allowed to scuttle around the board to their heart's content, um, it's actually remarkably easy to swarm a tank and, and um, destroy it in a close assault. When tanks shoot at each other, they roll two six-sided dice. They roll one for accuracy to see if they've actually hit their target and another one to see if their gun's penetrated. And you look up on a table uh, or you write on the base of the tank something. Um, and the score's modified by the type of tank and the tank you're shooting at. And um, whilst it's not perhaps as complicated as some um, dedicated tank rules. Um, it's fiddly and it's not in keeping, to my mind, with the quick flow and easy resolution mechanics of the rest of a game of Crossfire. By all means though, go and use the rules written if you like. That's why they've been written. I treat tanks differently. Really, I treat tanks the same as other units, so um, it's not that different. But I let tanks move um, as often as they want, just like any other unit, until they get stopped by the actions of the opponent. I've been playing tanks this way for more than 20 years, and never once have they been the governing factor in determining who wins the game. And I let them shoot as often as they want to as well, just like every other unit, because we never feel tanks without anti-tank weapons on the other side, either enemy tanks, enemy anti-tank guns, or enemy infantry equipped with um, anti-tank weapons. Given this newfound freedom, many a tank has surged ahead towards the enemy and met a very unpleasant end. Um, just as reality, an unsupported tank doesn't last very long. Luckily, for those of you who want to put infantry support with your tank, tanks can do a group move with any other unit, so you can move them around together, which is quite nice, and a tank does provide cover for the infantry if they're behind it. When infantry shoot at tanks, they roll their shooting dice as normal, and the tank will they'll either miss or the tank will be uh, pinned, suppressed or it'll be destroyed. Um, they don't need extra dice, they don't need to get special results. Just like when rifle squads are shooting each, at each other, Crossfire doesn't concern itself with the weapons they're uh, equipped with. It, the game assumes that your squad is a competent, functioning um, unit able to inflict damage on the enemy. So likewise, I assume that my anti-tank infantry are a competent functioning unit that have the ability to damage tanks. 
So um, if they get a kill, they get a kill. That's it. When tanks shoot at each other, I give them simple advantages. Um, I class my tanks into light, medium and heavy and they have different shooting dice and they lose shooting dice depending on if they're shooting at a heavier class of tank. In practice this means that a light tank cannot hurt um, a heavy tank. It can suppress a medium tank if it's lucky but generally they need to steer clear of uh, armour that's bigger than them. My one concession to uh, tankiness is um, I give tanks an extra shooting dice if they're shooting at the rear of an enemy tank. I class my tanks fairly arbitrarily. Um, I don't really care how big their guns are. The, uh, the Matilda and the Panzer IV here are both um, heavy tanks for my game because apart from the Sherman, they're the, um, the biggest tanks I own. The Panzer III and the Stuart are my medium tanks. Again, I've only got one of each, so there we go. And the 38T and the Vickers are my light tanks. So for someone like me who doesn't count rivets, really hasn't got a clue about tanks, um, this works well. I fully appreciate that this might be toe-curlingly awful for those of you who who are treadheads but these are just my rules and of course you don't have to follow them i'll just reiterate though that crossfire is not a game about the hardware it's a game about the people and that i think brings me to the end of what i want to talk about as far as the crossfire rules go there are rules for other aspects of world war ii gaming in the book obviously it covers barbed wire and minefields and bunkers but those are you know single paragraph things that are very simple to to um, understand and then there's um, a big list of every army um, in the entire conflict so you can build whatever forces you want which is nice and comprehensive um, and there's lists and lists of different kinds of tanks giving their um, accuracy and penetration roles. None of that seems worth talking about in a little video like this that's just designed to give you an idea of how the game might play. So um, I think that's it. My next Crossfire video will be a game, but that will be somewhere in the future because that takes some... Um, a little bit more organization than these ones do. Um, first thing is I need to buy a uh, tripod. Um, so don't expect that until sometime in April. In the meantime, um, I'll find something else to talk about. So thank you for staying with me um, this far. I hope it's been useful, helpful, interesting. Um, do please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon and tell your friends. So um, that's it for Crossfire. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.